Hello everybody. I am Hamid Dost. Dost Mohammadian, but in Germany they just call Dost my first part of family name Dost because it's short name. And I need to tell you Dost in Persian language is a very old word. It's also in Indian language. You have it Dost with the pronunciation Dost. This is a word from Sanskrit language and means friend. Yeah. And my family name is friend. <laughs> and I need to tell you something very interesting about you know the first speaker Adina because her name is also Persian word, Adina. Adina is a word we use in our culture for Friday. And that means uh, it's like a, because Adina means also mirror, that means every Friday at the end of the week is a mirror, because in Iran Friday is weekend, huh? It's like a mirror, you can look at your activities you did before and try to you know, get feedback and improve it. Okay, I'm going to talk about comparative cultural studies for SMEs and blue-green cultural sustainability between Germany and Iran. As you know, I'm a professor for international management and sustainability, and my expertise is sustainability with different, different approach, focus on cultural sustainability. In this case, I have a theory called the fifth wave theory, which is about uh, future and future shock and how we can prepare ourselves for the future because uh, you know, we, are, we have so many activities in the world, but unfortunately, the world is going to be every day more dark and darker because of so many, you know, uh, people, so many countries, so many activities, they are really against our nature. And this can destroy our life in the near future. That's why I made this theory in 2010 to say we need to get ready for the future and we need to prepare ourselves for this kind of problems. In 2021, we had a three days conference. University of Oxford invited me to make a conference about my theory in London, and we had so much good activities in the regard of cultural sustainability, future shocks, and how we can get ready for the future. And we had six months every week, weekly webinars regarding culture and sustainability. You know, we talk about culture, and in, um, in culture, we need to know culture is back, or backbone of our, our life. Backbone of our life is culture. And for culture, we have a backbone, it is communication. That means, if we want to learn a culture, we need to learn to do communication. We need to learn and improve our communication skills. How to smile to people, how to make a good communication. Before 2014, the psychologists, they did some research about a topic, EQ, IQ, and LQ. Emotional intelligence, intelligence, and love, Q, Q of love. Uh, our speaker, Adina Wolf, already talked about love and happiness, and she already used some of the philosophical sentences from Rumi about this case. But we need to know this is a real thing. And Psychologists, they found EQ has five components. Self-awareness, she talked about awareness today. Self-regulation, empathy, social skills, and motivation. We need to motivate ourselves. We need to think, think and care about the others. We need to make cooperation with the others. We need to put ourselves self-regulation. How to get up every morning, how to do a sport, how to do healthy food, and healthy lifestyle. That's why. After 2014, the psychologists, the business consultants, they found there are also some other points, and they call conversational intelligence. How to communicate with people with conversation. Language is also one topic in the culture. It's like a door or windows to go to a new culture. For this, we have conversational intelligence. Why sometimes people, they cannot communicate with you? They think you are a little bit, you know, uh, strange. They are not trusting you. And why? In conversational intelligence, you get some skills how to communicate to people and make the brain, the part of the brain, to trust you and communicate with you and smile you. Then you need to smile them. Then they will smile you. Then smile me. <laughs> okay. In this case, we have three technological revolution, which is called D3 revolution. D3 revolution is digitalization, decarbonization, and decentralization. Today, one of the biggest problems we have is environment. 
during the summer, we had so warm environment. Why? Because of our activities. Because we were not friendly to the nature. Decentralization. Exactly about this topic, we already made some conferences. If we want to go to culture and learn how to do culture, we already did research about cultural, co competitive cultural study between Germany and Iran. Why Germany is successful in this case? Because they do decentralization in the field of culture. What means that in my country, Iran, when we talk about culture, we have a ministry of culture and we have a, an organization they focus on culture. They are responsible about culture. Only these two. That means centralization. But in Germany, we have decentralization about culture. That means what? That means part of culture is coordinated by foreign, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Part of culture coordinated by different private sectors. Part of culture coordinated by universities. That means decentralization. Many different aspects, they come to culture and they put energy. You know the AAD. They are doing some, you know, some investment in different culture. Why? Because they want to expand the German culture in different countries. And this can help business activity with the focus on culture. Sustainability is very important. And this is the uh, 17 goals of sustainable development created by the United Nations. I need to tell you that was one of the biggest projects, social project in the United Nations. They did 80 questionnaires. And 7 million people answered the questionnaires during two years, more than two years. And they found 17 different sustainable development goals. If you go to details of these goals, you can see culture is everywhere. Culture is hiding everywhere. I need to tell you something very interesting. When I was young, I was working in the Ministry of um, Housing and Urban Development. They offered me a job as deputy for cultural affairs. That time, I didn't have any idea what is culture. And I said, ah, look at this. They give me the, you know, the worst position for work. What is this position? It's nothing. That time, I thought it's nothing. But in 2010, I was in Copenhagen. I have been living in Denmark since 2010 to 2015. And then in that time, I read a sentence from Professor Peter Drucker, who is famous to father of management and uh, business in USA. He says in that sentence, really interesting, Culture can eat strategy as breakfast. I said, oh my God, I'm doing so much effort on the strategy. My, my doctoral degree is strategy. I did publish so many books, articles about the strategy. But a strategy is just breakfast for culture. But what is culture then? Then I said, I need to go to culture and do a study about culture. That time, fortunately, I had a good chance to be in Copenhagen. And they are so good in cultural sustainability research. And the, I did also some research in this case, and I found so many things. And culture was like a big word for me, a new word with many things. According to the United Nations, we have three aspects for sustainability. We have social aspect, environmental, economic. And then they say also you need to have peace, equality, human rights, that's right. But you know, according to the history, if you go to 3,000 years ago, Iran or Persia or Pars, or we say in Persian language Pars or Persia, we were, we were the first culture and civilization of the world to have human rights. If you go and Google, the great Cyrus, who was king of Persian Empire, he made a human rights silent on the stone, and he wrote about human rights. We talk about 2,600 years ago. He made the first administration topics for the provinces in the country. Each province should have a governor. How to manage this? Human rights, and, and. That means civilization and culture was there already. This is my research about sustainability. In my research, sustainability has one definition. Livability plus quality of life. When we have livability, that means our area should be livable. What means livable? We have enough things to live, food, drink, on first, second, third level of Maslow pyramid about needs, human needs. When we have them, that means livable. For example, today we have war in Ukraine and between Ukraine and Russia. Then Ukraine is not a livable country today. Why? Because they don't have the main needs. That's, that means livability. Quality of life happens when you have livability. Then you go how to make good situation for people. 
as she mentioned about some methodology for relaxation, cultural tourism, and etc. But this can happen when you have livability, otherwise it's not possible. For livability plus quality love, cultural factors again is back. We have four factors for sustainability. To change the world for a better place for living, share value between people, responsibility, and take risk and manage risk. For this, we need to make guarantee for cultural sustainability. And this guarantee is cultural sustainability as a key. I have a model. United Nations mentioned three factors for sustainability. Economy, environment, and social, or society. But in my model, I have seven factors, and I call it 7PS model. In 2017, I made this model with seven factors. Economy, environment, social, politics, education, culture, and technique. You cannot talk about culture individually, because six other factors influence culture. You cannot talk about economy without the other factors. Today, our economy, I already, already, some of you, you were in my lecture about globalized economy. We talk about economy. Economy is not an individual topic. That means each factor is not individual. They have relationship together. I did calculation with my methodology about sustainability from one company before Corona and during Corona. You can see the blue diagram, the spider diagram. Its company is before Corona, is more harmonized, big, more sustainable. And during Corona is red one, no harmony, and no sustainability. I need to tell you, according to a presentation from uh, Adina, she's mentioned about relaxation, harmony, balance. That means our body is also like, you know, like the nature. Why? Because she mentioned about five elements, but we have also four elements or in our physical body. What is our four elements? Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Okay, four chemical elements in our body. What is the chemical elements for the nature? Tell me. Nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, the same. What means that? If you go to book of Rumi, it says, we, inside us is also a universe, a world. Why? Because we are universe. We are part of universe. Many people try to find, you know, in different religions, different cultures, try to find the God on the skies. But God is not there, it's here. Huh? It is here. You know, you are from India, some of you are from India. And in your culture, you have different, different beliefs, different religions, different, and all of them, they have the same points. Huh? All the same. Okay, why? Because this harmony is clear. We talk about sustainability. At first, we need to have sustainable body, sustainable thinking, and then that's possible to go to next step, to do business and etc. Okay, this is my model, 7 PS. Before Corona, the company, and during Corona. If we want to do calculation for sustainability with a cultural approach, we need to make a tree according to culture, and then we make a tree. We make a goal. What is our goal in our business with a cultural approach? And then we have some criteria. And then each criteria has some sub criteria. In mathematics, we can calculate this like this and say we have seven factors of sustainability plus livability and quality of life. You need to know, without the availability, talking about sustainability is not possible. How, to can, how we can calculate, we say effective sustainability is sigma probability of this factor, happening of the factor, times impact of each factor, times ratio or weight of each factor. After normalization, because in mathematics, if you want to calculate ratio, you cannot calculate without normalization. I'll give you an example. When you go to a school, you have three courses. But they are not the same because each one has different ratios. You have globalized economy, two credit. You have English language, one credit. You have something like modern issues in management, four credit. That means this is ratio. Two, two times, one time, or four times. Then there, the weight is different. The influence is different. In this case, I have invented, improved, introduced my fifth wave theory, or tomorrow age theory, or in Denmark they call it theory of comprehensive everything about the future. And then, as I said, we made the conference in 2021 in London, in University of Oxford, from 13 to 15 of October. 
and of course the poster of this conference. This is the overview of my theory, which started from 70,000 years ago, which happened cognition revolution, and then 13,000 years ago, agricultural revolution, and then 500 years ago, scientific revolution, during scientific revolution, 300 years ago, industrial revolution, and 100 years ago, business and economic revolution, and today, after 2020, we have the second business and economic revolution. In this story, you can see everything in, together, but because of lack of time, I don't want to go into the details, I'll just show you what is the theory. I, actually, I need to tell you, because we talked about the small microservice enterprises in this conference, according to my theory, if you want to prepare for the future, the small medium sized enterprises, they need to have a new concept, and I, in my theory, I made and introduced a concept called SME 5.0, or hybrid SMEs, or tomorrow SMEs, to prepare your business for the future shocks. Okay, fifth wave theory is about future of business. I, in my theory, I said edge of tomorrow is from 2020 to 2030, and now we are on the edge of tomorrow. And this is really dangerous situation. We need to pass this bridge. In this case, I talk about future of industry 4.0, which is a topic evaluated by Germany, and uh, a small medium sized enterprises 5.0, which is a topic concept in this case, to prepare for the future crisis, shocks, and readiness for tomorrow. We need to get ready for tomorrow, otherwise we cannot. What is the target of this theory? To make the world a better place for living. What? In this theory, we perceive the future of Industry 4.0 as a symbol of best culture. This is really important. Industry 4.0 is evaluated by Germany. Future of Industry 4.0, in my theory, is symbol of best culture, and future of society 5.0. Society 5.0 is a topic evaluated by Japan government. And I'm talking about future of that, society 6.0, which is symbol of non-best culture. Then, in my theory, I say, in another way Adina mentioned, cultures should come together. West and non-West. We don't say East, non-West. Why? Because she, she, her topic was taste of West. Why taste of best is interesting for non-best? Because taste of non-best is also interesting for best. In her presentation, topic was taste of best, but all example was from non-best, Rumi. That means we are all one. This is just different cultures, and different cultural differences make everything more diversity and more nice. This is according to our view. Why we do that? To forecast at first, prevent, and face for today's challenges, and future shocks. Today we have so many challenges, but in the near future we are going to have shocks. In conference in 2020, that was a conference in um, Switzerland about sustainability, and I was keynote speaker there, and I introduced a new model for technology according to culture. For Western culture, I talk about Industry 4.0 from Germany, and Society 5.0 from Japan and South Korea. But what I did there, I did two countries, for West, Scandinavian countries, and Germany, for non-West, uh, South Korea, and Japan. If you go and Google, the most innovative economy of the world, until 2022, that was sometimes Germany was first, sometimes South Korea was best, the first. Uh, sometimes Germany, and sometimes South Korea. If you Google now, you can see one of them is first now. The top innovative economy of the world. And then, if you go to Scandinavian countries, they are in top 10 innovative economy in the world. They are in the top 10. Germany and South Korea are top on the top. But the, time, the thing is, they are exactly from two different cultures. But technology is successful. German culture is different with South Korea, best and non best. And then, Japan, as I said, evaluated, Japan government evaluated topic society 5.0. How we can have society with focus on super intelligent tools. And all these things can come together in the fifth wave theory to, work, to make what? High sustainability, high quality of life, with a focus on seven factors of sustainability. For this, for this, using this kind of technology, digital transformation requires a cultural change. Why? Because we need to move from traditional mindset 
to digital mindset. Otherwise, it is not possible. Also, we need to be careful. Digitalization is so good, but we should control them. Otherwise, in my theory, one of the great biggest crises we will face until 2030 is technological problems. Why? Because we already watch so many movies, so many science fiction books. Dr. Michael Crichton, he published a book about Jurassic Park. In this book, what he want to say? He want to say, you can make maybe in the future dinosaurs from the uh, DNA. But if you cannot control them, they will dominate you. Or the books from uh, Professor Isaac Asimov about future, when the robots dominate people, and many other things. But today, we are going to prepare ourselves for this situation. That's why we need to be careful. Technology is good when we can use them. Otherwise, they lose us. I have, an I have an article, I published an article called When you use one technology or product for free, that means you are a product for that technology. We use today Gmail, 24 gigabyte for free. We use today so many other software, you know, we have, I don't know, Zoom, WhatsApp, all for free. What means that? Means exactly during the corona, authority of technological things, and that's good, we could use them, but we are dependent on them now. We are going to depend on them. And what happened to us? If they want, they can control everything for us. And also, they have all information. No privacy. Uh, I need to show you something. I, when I go to do shopping, they gave me cards. You can you know, get payback in Germany. But what means that? That means they know where are you every day, which shop, which city, and they trace you. It's really interesting. But how much they pay you for this? It's a bit. And you are product for them. This is everywhere today. But we have also some changes. Many companies, many people, they understood that. And they try to improve it. OK, well, according to my theory, we cannot talk about business without knowledge and technology. That's why I have a model in my theory called KTV model. Knowledge, technology, and business. Business is not an individual topic. Knowledge always can influence business. Technology always can influence business. That's why culture is again backward. Sometimes people say, what is the relation between culture and technology? But you already assured you. In Western culture, which kind of technology? And non-West culture, which kind of technology? And if you want to get success, you need to combine them together. Uh, this te theory also in the main topic, they try to help you to measure the readiness change. How to ready for tomorrow? How to re get ready for future shocks? There are so many methods, so many cultures. But the funny thing is, or the interesting thing is, we in all cultures, we already had so many methodologies and solutions for us. That's why I published an article called Traditional Solutions for Modern Problems. Today, we have so many modern problems in the city, big city like Berlin. What is the solution? Traditional solution. Relaxation, meditation, having some beliefs, and etc. And they all belong to invisible part of culture. Why? Because of different technologies, digitalization, corporate social responsibility, corporate sustainability responsibility, all technologies, we can use them in this theory. How? With open innovation, implementation, develop, and application of future of core technology and future of uh, society five. This can influence our life, improve training, education, and whole life. Impact of this theory is making the healthcare system good. In my theory, I have it as welfare 5.0 for the healthcare. Opportunity for citizens to get job. Today, Professor Fisher already talked about this. And making a city so nice area, which we call it, in my theory, urban six, or in the history and cultures, utopia. You know the meaning of utopia. Somewhere so nice, so beautiful, everybody is helpful, everybody friendly. But for us, this topic is just here. In reality, we don't have. That's why in my theory, I say, if we want to go to that, we need to go to this topic, urban 6.0. And there are some conditions how we can make a city community, society like this. And opportunity, new opportunity for cultural sustainability and having a life more resistance, sustainable, stable. 
Results, I already told you. For what are these results? To capable us to tackle in with future concepts. Future concepts today is not a joke. In this theory also, there are some other theories they can help us, I sustainable pillars, seven pillars, and those cultural theory. Because we talk about culture, I go to the those cultural theory. Before, I need to tell you this theory I have is focusing on trinity of open innovation, sustainability, and future of four technology. And then, seven pillars of sustainability I already showed you. In this case, culture is the main priority for this model. Culture is first, environment is second, Social is third, culture first, environment second, social third, economy fourth, technology five, education fee six, and politic last one. That means politicians should make the regulation law according to supporting the businesses and cultures. They all influence each other here. And for this, there are some, for the SMEs, there are some internal and external perspective. That means Managers, CEOs, entrepreneurs, they need to look at this. How they can do that with focus on their culture? Use cultural theory. I made my theory about culture to do cultural adaptation. She already mentioned about people, they come to my course to learn how to do cultural adaptation, talk together, and reduce the cultural conflicts. I have a theory for that with three indexes how to do cultural adaptation between people and companies. We have knowledge there, know-how, do-how. We have cultural differences here. And here we have cultural adaptation. How we can do that? You can see, in knowledge we have language as a first communication for culture. Then we have visible culture, like tradition, dress, talking, food. These are visible and invisible culture, like belief, religion, faith, the way of sadness, happiness. And here we have cultural adaptation. There are five, seven factors of the 7PS model. Social competency, environmental culture, economy, education, technique, quality. And communication competence, digital culture, cultural transform, transformation, legal points, intercultural transformation, preposition, and cross-cultural shock. Because when you go to a new shock culture, you get shocked sometimes. Then we put them together with multiple regression, is mathematical and statistical method. You get in interview and questionnaire with people, and then put them there in this regression, and then you find the best method to do adaptation between two cultures for two persons or for two companies. Impact. According to this, the in main impact of this model is achieve cultural sustainability because it's the first priority for us. For this, I'm going to conclude my presentation. Society 6.0 and SME 5.0. I made a model with SMEs focus on social, SMEs focus on environmental, and SMEs focus on economy. According to this model, with three mathematical matrices, I could calculate which one has the highest priority. And you can see, we have three surfaces. Um, environmental responsibility is first here. Social cohesion is Second, and economy efficiency is third. The problem we have today in the whole world is just we focus on economy, and we don't care about environment. We don't care about social cohesion. We don't care about any other things, just economy business. Then, according to this model, we have, as I told you, three surfaces. Here is environmental responsibility. Here is economic efficiency, and here is social cohesion. And you can see we have three matrices. When you do calculation, you can see the first priority is, as I said, environmental responsibility, second, social cohesion, and the last one is economy. But problem is today we say just economy. We destroy the environment, we destroy the ecology, and we don't care. In this model, I told you, the hybrid SME, SME5, not focus on economy, uh, only finance, also focus on social responsibility. If someone needs help, we need to help. Environmental friendly. If we have rubbish, not put in the street. If we are going to nature, we need to be friend to nature because we are four elements, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon, and nature the same. Then if you do something against nature, that means we are doing something against us, and we destroy our life. Energy and resource saving, today we have a problem because of energy. Look, this is really important, and plan for future. 
Conclusion. In the conclusion, there are three factors in SME5. There's about culture. SME culture, HR competencies, and succession planning. What is HR competencies? It's not about training and education. Many people, they get educated, they are PhD, they are doctor, they are professor, but that doesn't help. Why? Because they need to have competencies. What is competencies? How to deal with people. How to have skills to communicate with people. How to believe they are doing something for the nature and business. Then, business economy is moving from a traditional business today to innovative data and cultural sustainable business economy. Then today, uh, our business economy is not traditional anymore. It is according to culture, according to digitalization, and according to sustainability. Okay, now I'm going to show you the last part of my presentation and conclude it. Here. According to my research, because of Corona and how this Corona could be a good best practice for us to deal with the future shocks, I found 12 results. The world will change, of course. Behavior also will change. Humanity will return. You saw during Corona, people try to help each other. Humanity return. Economy after contagion is a still breathing. Economy is still there. Many people said, it's true completely, but not, not happened. The authority of technology company, like today, Zoom, Skype, and etc. Contagion and reconciliation of technology. Technology here has a very important role. Then we need to have a special culture for technology. Privacy risk, because of working at home, online, we got some health problem. We didn't have any activity like before, not movement, not sport, then eating more. And also data security, because or information is all online and people can have them. And there are so many data security problems. Next one is um, intensification, intensification of domestic economic shift because we had some problems for economy. That's why many hotels, they have to close because of Corona. This topic you talk, you know, I didn't talk about cultural tourism. In, during Corona, that was not really possible to continue like this. Why? Because the contagion, People could not communicate physically together because of the, you know, sickness. And then a training bond between people. People understood the value they already existed. I could not visit my family for two years. And I said, oh my God, that was a big value for me. Then culture returned to people, humanity returned. And the provision of health and medical care. We saw how much doctors, pharmacies, um, nurses, they are doing activity to, you know, help us. And um, it's ambition the world trade and to regain opportunity to have a better economy. In one point, I'm going to show you the crisis according to my theory. There are some crises we are going to face. We are going to face with the first one here, Corona, in 2020. Then next one, some other biological attack. You remember some happening, you know, some new, new viruses was there. They were not really Corona. And economic shift and recession, because of this economic problem, many companies, they have to close. So many social pro problems between people. Greenhouse, high greenhouse and uh, climate pollution, we had, especially this summer, these problems. Climate change, this is a big problem. That's why in my model, environmental responsibility was first. Technology is also a big problem if technology can dominate us. This is really dangerous. And what is the last one? Maybe you can tell me. Can you guess what is the last one? The biggest wave of destroying our life. If we don't get ready okay. until 2030. Do you have any idea? Okay. okay. Biodiversity collapse. That means if we are not friendly with the nature, nature will end everything. It's not a joke. Huh? It's not, it is not a joke. If we are not friendly to the nature, then nature says, okay, bye. Okay. Now, I give you a solution, how to do that. According to 7PS model, governments, strategy planners, resource managers, energy experts, process facilitators, politicians, universities, SME institutions, society, community, cities, they all need to come together. For doing what? Number one, 
blue green sustainable energy making infrastructure cross validation business marketing and technological innovation blue green sustainable mobility for transport waste wastewater and waste management blue green sustainable economy and health labor and social welfare security thank you so much for your attention Okay, thank you so much. And uh, now